Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to do a review on the new Novak Pulse version two speed control. So let me show you what's in the box. Okay, so when you get your hands on a Novak Pulse version two, here's what comes in the box. Open it up, first thing you'll see is there's some protective foam. Of course the main piece is the speed control, but we'll get to that last. You get, looks like the fan with some screws, some genuine 3M Servo tape or double-sided tape with some zip ties and some shrink wrap. A second shorter receiver wire. Instructions, which are nice because they're all in color. I think this is one of the only speed controls I've ever got where all the instructions and everything are all in color, like the wiring diagrams and programming, stuff like that. Looks like there's a, oh, you know what? This speed control came with this motor, so it looks like there's a, a piece of information for the actual motor and then the Novak sticker sheet and a uh, oh, Vulcan motor instructions. Yeah, this was all uh, shrink wrapped together, so that's what you get. So here is at the actual speed control, and uh, you can see that it's got the capacitor bank soldered directly onto the speed control. The motor wires are all blue. Of course, the battery wires are red and black. It's got a series of LEDs right here for programming and calibration, the sensor wire port. It's kind of nice because if you have a receiver wire that's either too long or too short. You can interchange them quickly and the switch wire is actually hardwired directly to the board. So that's what you get when you get a Novak Pulse version 2 ESC. Okay so any, for any of you hardcore racers out there you probably know that it's not really a secret that in the last several years Novak has had some issues with reliability and you know they, it's definitely hurt their reputation and so they've been working really hard to step their game up and get their hardware just dialed in the way it needs to be. And I think that they're either very close or there. I've run the speed control for almost two solid months. Not, it hasn't overheated, it hasn't thermaled, it hasn't done anything stupid. I've run the speed control up to about 125 or 130 degrees. I've run motors up to 170 degrees and haven't had any issues. But there's no question that they've had some, some problems in the past. And it seems like they have those rectified now. One thing that I've noticed about the Pulse speed control versus some of the other ones, I've owned basically every speed control, Orion, Pros, Hobby Wings, LRPs. One thing that I've noticed about the, LR, about, about the LRP, about the Pulse, is that it has a very, very, very fine low speed throttle re resolution. In fact, I wish I had a shot a video of this, but I had my short course truck and I had just pulled the throttle and I could actually get the wheels to go around so slow that you could read the words, which I tried that with a couple of my other speed controls and it just wouldn't happen. So. I think they're really getting it together, and I think that this is a, a pretty good, a pretty good quality speed control. A lot of new speed controls use boxes and laptops and things like that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with any of those options. But let me just share a quick story with you. A buddy of mine was up at the Spectrum race a few years back. His name is Mike. He drives for Novak. And Mike was really amped up, and he was getting ready to go up for his main. I think he qualified like seventh in the A for a short course mod short course and uh he was super nervous and he's standing in line and i see him he's reaching under his body and i can see the speed controls lighting up and i'm like what are you doing he's like i'm turning down the punch i'm like why he's like dude i'm amped he's like i'm literally almost shaking i'm so nervous he's like i'm afraid that i'm just gonna be overdriving the car so i'm he turned down the punch and mike actually beat me and finished really well in that particular race so i definitely think that it's really handy you know, that's kind of an example of if you know your equipment and you know the sequencing and what the lights mean, there's no question that you don't necessarily need a box, you don't necessarily need a laptop interface. I think that they're nice options, but it's also a nice option to be able to just reach onto the speed control and tune the car exactly the way you want it if you just know the speed, you know, know the lights and stuff like that. So with that said, I was told by Novak that they are working on a tuning box that should be a, should be due out next year, and it will be backward compatible with all the speed controls they have. So you can tune the speed control right here using the LEDs, or hopefully in the future they'll have a box. But either way, it's nice to have a few different options to tune the speed control. So that's that. Okay, so if I could change anything about this speed control, what would I change? I would pretty it up a little bit. I mean, the stuff works really good. There's no question about it. It's smooth. It performs well, doesn't seem to get hot. Novak prides themselves in using like high-end components and stuff like that. But maybe use like a billet aluminum lower or maybe add some posts, maybe clean, you know, just pretty it up a little bit. You know, there's nothing wrong with the black and orange, but if it was all like a, all inside of like a billet aluminum housing, I think that would be pretty cool. 
I definitely think the capacitor bank is a double-edged sword. Like I said, you, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, just depending on your particular situation. In my short course truck, I was thrilled that the, the capacitors were actually on the PCB, but in other cars where maybe the speed control wouldn't fit, that would really be a bummer, right? It'd be nice if one of these speed control companies could come up with like a, a modular way. You know, maybe it like clips in, or maybe there's like a little plug and then it clips in. That would be really cool if they could do something like that, because it would just make life so much easier. You know, once you solder on the wires, and then you have to solder in, you know, capacitor wires and stuff. It just, it's more of a pain in the butt. So anyways, overall, my overall opinion is that this is a pretty good, it's, it's a good speed control. It functions very, very well. It's priced right, it's priced in the area. And I definitely think that if you are a longtime Novak fan, I don't think you're making any mistakes going out and getting your hands on one of these. So I appreciate you guys watching. That's been my review on the Novak Pulse version 2 ESC. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, by the way, before you leave, I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I only make these videos so that we can have fun together. By the way, you'd be doing me a big favor if you could either comment, like, or even better, subscribe to my channel. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.